Hi, welcome to this corporate maths video on compound interest. In this video, we're going to look at four examples. The first one being a non-calculator example, and then three questions, which are then calculator questions. Whenever you're using compound interest or solving compound interest questions, this formula can be very important, and it's initial multiplied by the multiplier to the power of time, or you could just apply the percentage repeatedly in the question. And I'll show you what I mean now. So let's have a look at our first question. So let's have a look at our first question. So David invests £3,000 in the bank for two years, and it earns compound interest of 10% per year. Calculate the total amount of money that David has in the bank after two years. So whenever you're doing a non-calculator compound interest question, what we're going to do is we're going to work out 10% to begin with and add that on, and that'll tell you how much money David has in the bank after one year. And then you're going to work out 10% of how much he has in the bank after one year and add that on to see how much he has in after two years. So first of all, after one year. So we've got £3,000 to begin with. That's how much he invests in the bank. And we're going to be adding on 10%. So 10% of 3000 is 300 So 10% is equal to £300. And that's how much interest he earns after one year. So we add that on, and so after one year in the bank, his balance will say 3300 Now he's going to earn another 10%, so over the next year he earns another 10%. So we're going to work at 10% of 3300 So 10% of 3300 is equal to £330. We then add that on to the 3,300 to see how much he has in the bank after two years. So if we add that on, we're going to get 3,630 pound. So after two years, David will have in the bank 3,630 pound. He's earned 630 pound interest. So whenever you're doing compound interest questions without a calculator, we just, just keep on applying the percentage each time. So you work at 10%, add it on, another 10%, add it on, 10%, add it on, and so on. Um, it could be that it's decreasing, and then in that case, you would be taking the, getting the percentage and taking it off, getting the new percentage taken off, and so on. Okay, another formula, this formula is very useful, this initial times multiplier to the power of time, and this is really useful whenever you're dealing with calculator questions. So let's have a look at a calculator question now, and it just makes it really quick and simple to solve compound interest questions. So the question says, Emily invests £8,000 in the bank for four years. It earns compound interest of 3% per year. Calculate the total amount of money that Emily has in the bank after four years. So the formula is initial, multiplied by the multiplier, to the power of time. So, first of all, her initial amount of money, well, that's gonna be the 8,000 pound. Then, times by the multiplier, so it's a, it's gonna be earning 3% interest. That's It's gonna be increasing by 3%. So watch the Corbin Mouse video on multipliers if you need to, but whenever you wanna increase something by 3%, you multiply it by 1.03. That's the multiplier, it's a 3% increase because it's gone from 100% up 3%, so that's 103%, and as a decimal, that's 1.03. So a multiplier is multiplied by 1.03. If it was 5% interest, it would be 1.05. If it was 20% interest, it'd be 1.20, and so on. Now, in terms of the time, because we need to do the multiplier to the power of time, the question says it's 3% interest per year, and it's been invested in the money for four years. Because it's been invested for four years, we're gonna do it to the power of four. So now we just need to do 8,000 multiplied by 1.03 to the power of four in your calculator. And when you do that, we get the answer of 9,004 pound, 0.07048. But because this is to do with money, we're just gonna run that to two decimal places. So our answer will be 9,004 pound and seven pence. So if Emily invests 8,000 pound in the bank at 3% interest per year, four years, she would have nine thousand and four pound and seven pence in the bank at the end of it. So it's just much quicker than having to do it each year individually. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a different question. We're going to do one where actually it's decreasing. So here we've got a question. It says a full tank of water, a full water tank, has sprung a leak, and it's going to lose five percent of its water every hour. What percentage of water will be left after three hours? Now there's two differences with this question. First of all, it's decreasing, it's losing 5% each hour. The other thing is it didn't actually, remember the formula is initial multiplied by the multiplier to the power of time. Now in this question, we know the multiplier because it's losing 5%, but it's going down by 5%, it's going to be multiplied by 0 0.95 because it's going down by 5%. And if you had 100% to begin with and you're losing 5%, it'll be 95%, so that's 0.95. And to the power of time, it's three hours, so it's to the power of three. The only difference in this question is that we don't actually know what the initial is. Uh, because we've been told it's a full water tank, and the question says what percentage of water will be left after three hours, we're gonna say the initial is 100%, it was full.
So we're going to then type that into the calculator. We're going to type 100 multiplied by 0.95 to the power of 3, and we get that after 3 hours there would be 85.7375% of the water left in the water tank. And that's it. Now, in terms of this question, the question said what percentage of the water will be left after three hours? So that's 85.7375%. If the question said what percentage of water was lost after three hours, we would have taken that percentage away from the 100 to see how much had been lost. The last question says a tree's height increases by 30% a year. A tree is two meters tall, so the tree is two meters tall to begin with. After how many years will it take the tree to exceed 12 meters in height? So in this question, well, we're gonna write down the formula initial times multiplier to the power of time and we know the initial is equal to two meters and we know the multiplier well it's an increase of 30 percent so that's going to be a multiplier of 1.30 or just 1.3 to the power of time so in this question we haven't been given the time but we're going to try different values of time to find when the height of the tree will exceed 12 meters so and whenever you're doing this in the like on a test or for homework make sure you're showing your method for each of them don't just do it in the calculator and write the final one down write your different attempts down on the page to begin with so i'm going to try to begin with five years so i've typed in two times 1.3 to the power of five and i've got a height for the tree of 7.42586 meters well that hasn't reached the 12 meters that we've wanted and we want to exceed on a height of greater than 12 meters so that's clearly not greater than 12 meters so i've written that down on the page next i'm going to try my six or uh, six Years. So I'm going to try six years and I've got that's equal to 9.653618. So again, that's not quite worse. It's not actually close to the 12 meters. We need to try another year. So we're now going to try seven years. And when we try seven years, we get that the height of the tree, whenever we do two times 1.3 to the power of seven, we get 12.5497034. So after seven years, the height of the tree has exceeded 12 meters. So the answer would be seven years. And that's it. So on a question like that, make sure you're showing your method. So for compound interest, it's very important you learn the formula, initial times the multiplier to the power of time. A non-calculator question, what you would want to do is to just keep on applying the percentage after each year or each week or each month or whatever the time scale in the question says. That's it.